Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Fallen London. Today we are going to be having a look at March's exceptional story, Shades of Yesterday. And as always, I'm going to do the thing. If you want to play this yourself, please support Felbear by becoming an exceptional friend. You get your extra 20 actions, you get your extra cards in your deck, and you get access to these wonderful stories every month. Spoilers are ahead. If you don't want to, if you want to do this yourself, go ahead and do it yourself. You don't want me spoiling it for you. So without further ado, let's go to the exceptional story, Shades of Yesterday. Three urchins perch on crates behind a warehouse, writing their memoirs. Oh, remember that time we made a hat from candles and the old codger tried to lick it? Or that time we tried all them bats in a bag and used it to fly across the docks? What about when we weren't creeping in Mahogany Hall and ended up in the mind reading act? You have the keen sense that many or all of these escapades are entirely fictional. Let's, um... <laughs> we can either crush their fantasies, they lead a more realistic approach to survive the London streets. I'm not a very heartless character. Add a story of your own. It's harmless fun. Help them enjoy it. Or we can steal their stuff. Urchins always have useful junk in a bag nearby. Let's add a story of our own. You step from the shadows, startling the tiny authors. At first, they are wary and delighted to be recognized as the proprietors of the great biscuit heist of Tegpenny Street. They recall the vehicle they fashioned from velocipedes and advertising boards, and the cunning switcheroo they pulled to send the constables after a baker's boy with a distinctive tartan cap. They shake their heads ruefully when you ask them for a taste of the loot. Sorry, ma'am, them biscuits are long gone. But we'll keep you a little something aside next time. What about a nice muffin? We know all the supply routes. Is it the season of endeavor available anywhere in London to unlock this exceptional story? Well, here we are. An exuberant urchin is accosting passers-by entirely undeterred by their almost universal rudeness. You, sir. No, perhaps you, madame. You have a look of an adventure about you, no? Watching more closely, you discover a peculiar methodology. The urchin isn't approaching everyone. He avoids the fusty and the hideabout in favor of those bearing prominent weaponry, dashing scars, or a swagger in their step. What could he be up to? Well, before we unlock it, let's listen in on the urchin's conversations. A few Londoners are charitable enough to stop, if for a moment. The urchin pulls them to one side of the pavement before peppering them with questions. A scarred captain is being encouraged to rel relive a battle with a tentacled horror of the briny Z. The urchin's nods and gasps are well practiced. He is a formidable interviewer, though the ending question is something of a non sequitur. So, how do you feel about practical jokes? Let's unlock the shades of yesterday. You unlock this exceptional friend story begins with the kaleidoscopic entrepreneur. That is going to be so hard to say. <laughs> Available in Veil Garden. Okay. Let's travel to Veil Garden. The kaleidoscopic entrepreneur. She patrols the pavement in fine tailoring and a remarkable hat. Charming passers-by and dispensing coupons for small discounts. Behind her, an immaculately lettered sign reads, All this week, pen show. A pen show? Pray tell is a pen show. She has already noticed you from across the street. Let's approach her. That smile turns on you. She examines you from head to foot. You look like a lady of letters and a stylistic inspiration for your contemporaries, I dare say. May I tempt you to add a little colour to your correspondence? We have a pen to suit every hand, and a signature ink for every personality. She smiles again. A bold one for you, I think. She disappears into the doorway. There appears to be no entry fee. Oh, this sounds fantastic. A meeting hall has been converted into an impromptu festival of handwriting. It's just like a craft fair. If everyone, if everybody there sold fountain pens, fancy papers, and obscure inks. Activities available at the pen show will vary throughout the day. Hmm. So... We get our bearings. 
The pen show is not a regular feature on London's social scene. How does it work? You make a quick tour of the tables, easier said than done, because they are packed into a relatively modest hall, and the aisles are rammed with curious visitors. You see racks of pens, new and collector's models and bottled inks with a staggering range of hues. Across the room you notice the kaleidoscopic entrepreneur circulating, shifting from group to group with casual professionalism. She dispenses a compliment here, a piece of advice there, and within 90 seconds has moved on to the next group. This is a businesswoman, aware of her public image, and very much in control. Okay, so we can dip a few pockets in an overcrowded room where well-heeled strangers have money to waste. You're almost obliged to assist them. <laughs> oh, okay, or we can make our own ink. London's subterranean condition Lens Iron Gall Ink, a unique neatly sheen. A hands on, on workshop is available. Wait, should we dip a few pockets? Have a look. After a bit of experimentation, you find a prime spot approximately three feet in front of a pyramid of richly coloured inks. You learn to time your approach to coincide with the moment where the crowd parts and your quarry first notices the exhibit. In this manner, you acquire a good haul of small valuables. Oh wow, a brilliant soul. Those things are actually quite rare. While we're here, we may as well make our own ink as well. You find room at an improvised lab bench. The first 10 minutes are taken up by a comprehensive disclaimer explaining that tantic acid was obtained from the Heart Heartscross Oaks under strict license from Her Majesty's Department of Parks and Game. Then you are issued a small bottle of iron sulfate, filtering equipment, and a lump of carganian gum. At first you are disappointed by the pale grey product, but on paper it darkens to a pleasing purple black. Your neighbour knocks their bottle across the bench. You catch it by the in instinct and offer it back. Amazed, they offer you a handkerchief to clean your hand. Ooh. That seems kind of useful. Okay, so a new option has arrived. Ask about the kaleidoscopic entrepreneur. Her pen show is an overnight success. Did anyone know her before she became famous? You recognise a few faces in the crowd and are able to strike up conversations. After a few niceties about the merchandise, you ask the kaleidoscopic entrepreneur. Nobody can recall her until you reach a renowned alcoholic poet. She used to be a shop girl, he sniffs. Worked for old what's-his-name around the corner, selling pencils and blotting paper more or less took over the place, then just disappeared. He closes one eye and squints. Axed her to be my muse once. She didn't fancy it. Okay, well I guess we're here to try out the latest designs. One table offers visitors the chance to get hands-on with new models of pen. Fashionable Londoners crowd around like a horde of angry peacocks. The sample table is popular, spread with an assortment of loose papers and notebooks. You jostle your way to the front. An assistant tears off a top sheet, removing the scratchy work of a previous visitor. She presents you with a deliciously unmarked page and an entire tray of pens to choose from. Take your time, he says. Okay, so we can construct a short mystery. These little clues could be assembled into a fanciful tale. We can recount a lazy dream. It came from your subconscious. Why shouldn't others benefit from it? Or we can scribble gibberish as fast as you can. At last, a chance to let the four thoughts out. This will trade up your maniac's prayers at a highly pref preferential rate. Hmm. Well, we have an awful lot of cryptic clues. So let's go with this. What happens? Something feels strange. The assistant offers you a glint speckled pen. Particularly good feed on this one, she winks. Just the thing for writer's block. It is an obvious sales conceit, yet you do find it easy to get started on an impromptu murder mystery. Did the reverend construct an alibi by lending her dog collar to an actual Irish settler? Did the bruiser write that fungal love poem? Did the detective do it? in order to establish his innocence in another, more politically sensitive murder. 
So compelling is your new mystery that you lose track of time. You snap back to your senses as the assistant clears away your writing and gently removes the pen from your hands. The second draft will be dynamite. Hmm. The assistant smiles apologetically. We're refilling the pens at the moment. Won't you come back in a few minutes? Behind her, a second assistant checks the discarded samples are drying before sliding them into a box. You've had enough of exquisite writing experiences and the tactile pleasure of crisp, high-end paper. Thank you, beams the assistant. Another visitor elbows their way into your place at the table. Okay, so we have a disturbance. Someone is pushing through the crowds, moving erratically. They head towards you. Confused visitor. A young man wanders past the ink tables. He bumps into passing strangers and blinks a lot. His collar and waistcoat are scandalously loose. We have two options. We can offer our assistance. The poor fellow is off, obviously in distress. Or we can watch him. Something potentially more interesting than stationary is going on here. Let's offer our assistance. The man's eyes widen as you approach. Do, do you know me? He asks. Which island are we on? You find him a chair and ask him what he remembers. His fists clench as he concentrates. We went underwater, he says. And there was an overgrown crater and a mushroom. I didn't know what to bring her, so I brought a mushroom. I must have gone there 15 times because uh, before I worked up the courage. He gives a vacant smile. And the frown returns. I saw the lights of London waiting for us. That's really strange. The kaleidoscopic entrepreneur approaches shaking her head in exasperation. Your hostess bears down upon the unfortunate fellow. Peter, how many times must I tell you? Stay in the back while the doors are open. The kaleidoscopic entrepreneur puts her arm around his shoulders. You could have been hurt or terribly embarrassed yourself. Uh, come now, I'll make you a cup of tea and you'll feel better. She gives you an apologetic look. I'm sorry, he didn't mean any harm. I hope we didn't spoil your experience here at the show. Before you can reply, she turns away, steering the erratic man towards the door. Okay. So... Can I try the latest signs again? Ooh, let's, let's do... Uh, let's recount a lazy dream. It came from your subconscious, but shouldn't others benefit from it? Ah, so we trade 50 drops of prisoner's honey. Wow. Or 10 romantic notions and one vision of the surface. The assistant offers you a compact pen with snake skin detailing. It feels familiar in your hand. The dream began with a fleet of slow barges on the stolen river. You reclined on cushions, bobbing as the golden haze spread to envelop the docks, the bridges, and knots of startled sailors. Each boat took a different tributary you had never noticed before and yours led up a gilded ascent rising high above London until at last the cavern roof parted and you were there in Venice bobbing on the Grand Canal with all the other barges. The assistant retrieves her pen from your highly relaxed fingers and removes your handwriting sample which had become quite loopy. Your honey has gone and the dream is fading but you feel entirely uplifted. We can scribble some gibberish as fast as we can. At last, a chance to let the thoughts out. Got a headache now. The assistant offers you a sleek walnut pen. You remove the cap and never call brass from the gate of gas, a moon miser, appetizer, trading faces in fallen places, slug races and passphrases, incomprehensible girth for pigs in the earth, a bizarre hussar in love between stars. The pen flies from your hand. The assistant fields it with a practiced lunge, applies the cap, examines your trembling scrawl on the table and slides the paper away. An impressive demonstration, she says. Thank you. Wow. Okay, let's leave the table and continue. Let's inquire about Peter. Who was that confused young man? The entrepreneur begins to give you a polite brush off, and she sighs. A young man with whom I have an understanding, had an understanding. Frankly, we were engaged to be married. 
He had an accident and now he requires care. I do my best. It's not easy building the business to support us and being there for him too, but I didn't expect it to be easy. She brushes down her jacket and smiles at you. Thank you for your concern and for being a valued customer. I guess we can ask about the kaleidoscopic entrepreneur? I kind of know all of these. We have done them all before. Let's just dip some pockets again. Never hurts to get some of those. Yeah, this, this number down here is changing. Maybe if I try, try the latest designs again. Let's, uh, let's recount. Let's do a short mystery. Yep, that's the same as it was last time. Thinking is harder than usual. I'm guessing, slowly but surely, I'm making myself nutty. Yes, we're refilling the pens. Here we go. The closing minutes. The stalls are packed up, but the kaleidoscopic entrepreneur has her eye on you. As the crowd thin, the kaleidoscopic entrepreneur singles you out. I take it as a personal slight when a visitor spends an entire year but doesn't buy a pen. She steps close and lowers her voice, so I'm going to give you my very best prices. Don't tell anyone. Ooh, this looks good. Buy a fifth city classic. An assertive yet stylish pen. It's ebony barrel inlaid with subtle purple pinstripes. Or we can buy a Carganian crosshatcher, a precision nib with an innovative feed. But its real attraction is its intricate geometric detailing on the barrel punctuated by tiny green fragments. I do actually quite like the sound of that. We can buy a rubbery registrator. Its organic lines are set off with a crystalline amber texture, a striking instrument, though the grip the grip is somewhat unconventional. We can pop out for change. It's very tempting. Perhaps you can make it to the bank before closing time. We can not buy anything. I think I like I like ebony. I think I may just get a, a fifth city classic. Let's do it. The pen comes in a presentation box lined with black silk. The entrepreneur gives a quiet smile as you examine it. Had a lot of interest in that particular model from, shall I say, the financial elite of London. I had a feeling you were among their number. This is clearly a bit of after sales ego massage, but she's not entirely wrong, is she? A blot on the landscape, you pause on the pavement outside the hall. The pen show is a slick commercial operation, and the kaleidoscopic entrepreneur seems in irrelevant. But is there something else going on here? Let's probe deeper. You gather that a few prominent Londoners have visited the show in recent days. Perhaps they could offer some after-sales feedback. You can learn more at Ladybones Road, Spite and Watchmakers Hill. Okay. Ladybones Road. The Implaceable Detective. Her case notes hold many mysteries. Not least, how to decode her migraine-inducing scribble. <laughs> Survey her stationery. In the past, you may have had enemies or allies, but for now, you need a review of her new pen. The renowned sleuth doesn't ask how you know she has a new pen. She brings it out and balances it across one finger. Red details glimmer on its body. It's a fine writer, but I wonder if it's cursed. Somebody broke into the office last night and took all my notes from recent cases. Everything I'd written with it. I can't remember the details. Care to examine the scene? You check the smash window and her filing system. This was the work of a professional who knew exactly what they wanted. Coincidentally, you notice a couple of files which mention you by name. No sense in leaving them here. Ah, Spite and Watchmaker's Hill. So these pens appear to be stealing people's memories. Spite. Eavesdrop in the bell. Journalists from Doubt Street sometimes linger in there, hoping to catch a juicy story about some new crazed killer. And journalists use pens. <laughs> Let's have a quick one. You might hear something. You've barely touched your drink when you notice a couple of thin fellows passing an ornate black pen and back and forward. It looks new. 
we take a nearby stool. Iridinium tipped nib, see? Gold with a bit of flex. It gives a little flourish to me notes. Do you like a bit of flourish? Do I ever. How's your column going? What column? The weekly column. I thought it was due this evening. A weekly column. Outside, a knife flashes in a scuffle. A jack? It's over in seconds. Hmm, so the journalist forgot that he had a column. I was not paying attention to where I was supposed to go. Watch make hill? Yeah. Consult the Torre Rapancy? Oh dear. Watchmaker's Hill's foremost poisoner. The Torre is known to keep meticulous records, and he is said to have a side interest in inks. Ask him about his documentation. Has he purchased any new stationery reason? But of course! The toxic Signor lifts a hand. You observe blue and green staining across his right index finger. Without precise records of concentration and origin, this trade is very dangerous. He gestures to a long shelf of stoppered bottles. These new colours allow precise labelling. You ask about the last five bottles, which have no labels. The Torre mouth drops open. I would have not filed them without a label. He lifts a hand to his head, inky finger agitating the skin above his eyes. I could not have forgotten. It seems wise to leave before you touch anything. But here are the lines of inquiry. Recent customers of the Kaleidoscopic Entrepreneur are losing their memories. Recent customers of Kaleidoscopic Entrepreneur are losing memories. This can't be a coincidence. You take the Fifth City Classic from your pocket and give it a shake. It doesn't seem full of brain-devouring beetles. Let's sleep on it. Perhaps tomorrow you can pick up a lead at the pen show. You prepare for bed. It seems wise to leave the pen in another room. Your dreams are troubled. Ideas shower you. A breakthrough in a long, cold case. A connection between the church and the warehouse nearby. A rain of shell fragments. The door of the bazaar. Seven letters, one word. Twelve and seven. Old light and light still unformed. This could be a short story, an ambition, a sermon. It fits all. If only you can keep hold of the tiny, falling stars. With a gasp, you're awake. What was it you were meant to do today? Ah, yes. The Pen Show. One of your neighbours is cooking breakfast. And it is in Vale Garden. But... This seems like a good place for me to end the first episode. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. I like pens. I kind of want to buy a new pen. This whole thing is kind of doing that to me. But either way, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.